the cancelled Metroid multiplayer game. Alright, I'm actually really excited to talk about this because I don't see a lot of people mentioning this, but it's a lot to go over. So, Mercury Steam, they approached Nintendo with wanting to make a Metroid game of their own. They had their own vision for a 3D Metroid Prime style game, and not only did they want to make a title for the Wii U, but they also wanted to have a 3DS game to coincide the release. Now ultimately, Nintendo shot down the pitch, even though Mercury Steam already spent a lot of time working on a prototype, mostly because Nintendo said that the Wii U was dying, so it would be better if they just focused on a 3DS title that would be smaller and quicker to produce, and probably more profitable. They had their selection of what they wanted to do, they wanted to do a remake of Metroid Fusion, but Sakamoto is decided to instead give them a remake of Metroid 2, which was a game that Sakamoto had no hand in creating, and was also a game that was in desperate need of a remake anyways. So that's how we got Samus Returns, but their 3D prototype didn't go to waste. They had plans to turn it into an original franchise in the event that Nintendo turned their pitch down, and in 2017, that original idea was revealed to be Raiders of the Broken Planet, a hero shooter. At the peak when hero shooters were already saturating the market, and it was by a studio that at the time was still not very well known and unproven, and was riddled with a shit ton of microtransactions. At the height of anti-microtransaction movement. Yeah, suffice to say, the game kind of flopped upon release with very little fanfare. Not due to a lack of effort by Mercury Steam, because they did earnestly try to do a lot of like unique things with this gameplay, including much more robust melee combat system that you didn't normally see in third-person shooters. And the character designs were neat. That's about it. I think Mercury Steam immediately knew that they had a sinking ship on their hands, so in a desperate attempt to course correct, they turned the game into free to play, and when that didn't work, they decided to just rebrand the entire thing completely from the ground up and relaunch it as a new game called Space Lords, going free to play from the start. But once again, this ended up not really doing much to help the game sales. The microtransactions were still incredibly intrusive. Players were still kind of complaining about some of the gameplay, but most damning of all, players just were not engaging with the characters, the world, and certainly not the writing, which a lot of people cite was trying too hard to be Marvel-esque. So yeah, once again, Space Wars didn't take off, and it's impossible to find any matches for the game now, even though servers are still up and running. Honestly, I feel bad for Mercury Steam, because this was clearly a project they poured a lot of heart and soul into, and you can just tell by the presentation and the affection they try to show their characters and their setting. But ultimately, for the reasons I said it before, it just did not click with gamers across the internet. The reason why they wanted to make this a Metroid title was because the fact that it would be an established and recognizable franchise would already do so much of the heavy lifting for marketing. Metroid is a familiar universe to a lot of people, and is primed for spin-offs like this to really expand its setting, because the original pitch was that Cyrus was going to be palling around with multiple different bounty hunters or federation soldiers and everything in between. It's hard to tell which ideas were poached from that original Metroid concept and placed into Space Lords, but you can definitely tell, like, it's a bunch of space vagrants uh, chumming around on an abandoned planet trying to find mysterious objects from an extinct civilization. So yeah, definitely overlap in terms of themes right there. And I gotta say, now that Mercury Steam have proven themselves twice over with the Metroid brand, in both gameplay and in respecting its universe, I think now more than ever that original pitch might still happen. Metroid Dread has made Nintendo a nice fat stack. Like at the time of this recording, Metroid Dread is the most successful Metroid game in the entire franchise, even eclipsing Metroid Prime, catapulting it back into the limelight. I think we're in a position to see a lot more Metroid spin-offs like we used to do in the mid 2000s with shit like Metroid Pinball and Metroid Prime Hunters. And now that Mercury Steam has twice over the experience of trying to launch a game like this, I think they've earned enough knowledge on how to pull a game like this off Third time's a charm is what I'm saying. Keep an eye on Mercury Steam and Metroid in the near future, because if we end up seeing an announcement of a multiplayer Metroid game, or at least a Metroid game that has a much bigger emphasis on multiplayer, even if it's solely a multiplayer based game, and it's by Mercury Steam, I think we have a lot of reason to be excited.